I can never get this angle right, but that's okay. Zwa reveal. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> she dressed up extra today. Good morning. You got to. It's a mad hat. I'm sorry. Today. I got to stand you up. You have to stand up. And then you have to get down so people can see your hat. Well, they'll see it during the show. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, right, so we're, we're getting going kind of late today. I feel like the computer's in a weird place, but I'm going to not yeah. stress. I'm not stressing. This is me not stressing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I, we're getting going a little late on filming, so um, we might not have this be as long today, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but because I had a chamber meeting this morning on Zoom, and I watched Liz come in because I was here extra early, and I'm like, A, she looks really cool, and B, I feel underdressed. <laughs> I figure this is like this is my this is my um, out of makeup Harlequin look. That's that's about as as uh, dressed up as I get today. <laughs> I just I was like I, I know I want to wear Harlequin. my bright skirt, and then I found the black top, and then I was like I have that. And she has a fascinator hat. That's just, just like a little here. Can you can you scoot that way? Don't don't get up. Don't get up. Don't get up. Just lean over so that. No, no, no. I meant so that you're in front of the, the, the needles so people can see it. Oh. Like, just go, yeah, see that? How cool is that? That's going to be a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow, The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in, in what was super, super foggy overcast, but is maybe clearing up a little downtown Brevard. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. <laughs> and and the hand sanitizer is blocking your oh. knitting. So I'm going to move it. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably have to use it more often than you during the filming. So I'm putting it over here. <laughs> and we're getting closer to Halloween. So I'm imagining this is good. She's going to come in in more fun outfits. Um, and I'm going to come in as me. Because <laughs> that's what I do. That's what I have energy for right now. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I would have had his Halloween mask set. Um, all I did Sunday and Monday mm -hmm. was work on this. <laughs> like, Which almost matches the green you're working on right now. Almost matches your dress. Almost. Your dress is a little brighter. Yeah. We, we had a conversation. Um, shout out to Cheryl. Cheryl is one of our Knit Nighters. Um, visited... And it signed up for multiple appointments on Friday. So she got to do a lesson and come inside and sit in the seats of honor, which are right here where we film when you have an indoor appointment. Um, and, and we had discussion with her about how like seeing the stuff we show off on camera in person just doesn't compare. Just like, you know, she's like, oh, it's purple. The purple, there's purple in that. Totally lost on film. I'm like, I know. And she finally got to see the real color of this sweater. Olive oil is not yellow. This is the yellow. This is our golden yellow that people think this is the gold. That's the gold. Olive oil. That almost shows it in the right color. Anyway. Um, no, it was really fun. So you got, she got to see the new shop, even though it is the new shop in warehouse format. So that was that was a wonderful highlight of yeah, the end of the week. week. It was right? fun. Mm -hmm. it was fun. And we had our sit and stitch on Saturday, our virtual sit and stitch. Thank you for everybody who joined. It was fun. And those who joined on Facebook got to got to stare at me for like four hours if they stayed that long. <laughs> we saw some people pop in I haven't seen in a while, like at least with their names. Um, and we saw some people on Zoom that we haven't seen in a while. And we saw a lot of regulars and it was really fun. So um, it was a good weekend. Yeah, it was a good weekend. I got a little bit of annoyed mail, but other than that, it was a good weekend. <laughs> we have public service announcement, and I won't vent too much about this. And I told Liz I wasn't going to vent at all, but, you know, she knows me. Um, if you want to go anywhere special right now and travel, I highly recommend looking, checking them out more than just Googling them. Like checking out their website. Do they have COVID restrictions? Do they have changed hours? And the reason I'll say that is we've been struggling with both Google and Yelp, which is um, Yelp slash Yahoo is, is the um, driving force behind Apple Maps. 
we've been struggling with keeping because because the new normal changes all the time and we've actually been in a, a holding pattern normal for a while that is not our old normal but keeping google and apple maps and everything updated on that well, is, has been has been a struggle and i'm sure so that clear. those aren't the only two like yeah. There's Bing. I think I've updated Bing, but there's like you update it and sometimes it doesn't post right away or it needs verification or if you're not advertising with them, they slow it down. And uh, or they say, oh, like if they only let you say if you're open or closed, that, that anyone who shopped with us know that doesn't really work right now because our open is not the same as just walk in the front door open. So it's a struggle. So really, um, if it's somewhere you're really, really excited to go, please check it out first or call or do something because um, I consider myself somewhat internet savvy and tech savvy and I'm having trouble keeping up with keeping everyone like apprised of what we're doing. So imagine someone who struggles with the internet a little bit more. It leads to a lot of miscommunication and it leads, and everybody's stressed right now. Everybody's stressed. So the littlest thing is going to set us all off if we let it, if or it, if it tips. If it's possible, go to their actual website yeah. or call them. Yeah. Google's um, not their website. No. We've Apple had Maps, issues with that too. Google, like. Mm -mm. And they may have yeah. thought they updated, like us, and it didn't update, or, or it's pending, or there are so many different search engines out there, even though Google is like the monopoly of a lot of things. There's other ways to try to find out about stuff, and we may not have covered all of those things, or the other shop might not have. So, you know, do your, do your research, call. We're happy to talk to people when we're here on the phone. Anyway, so a little bit of stress, but, um, but it's also just the acknowledgement, we've talked about it before, that everybody's really stressed out and tired of this right now, right? We're tired of this. We, we don't in necessarily go like, yay, I get to run in and out of the shop 16 times bringing people yarn. <laughs> but the flip side is, we, we don't mind doing it that way to keep everybody safe. So it, it's not an inconvenience to us if you want to see 10 different styles of yarn in the shop. But it's also not something that we're, we're happy we're in that situation. We'd like to return to normal too. Oh yeah. It's just not going to happen right now. Normal is scary right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and we're not living in fear, let me tell you. It's just, we want people to be safe. So anyway, okay. So what did you, what did I think you I can work, get off my soapbox now, right? What did you work on? I can try. Over the weekend. <laughs> um, I worked on too many things. That's the problem. So substantial progress. Ooh, ooh. What I made the most progress on is I redid my elastica hat. Your elastica hat? Let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> I... Have not woven in my ends, shocker. But um, I had started my Alaska hat, and I know I'm not showing it off very well yet, because um, I started my Alaska hat with uh, a color combo we picked out. And I saw someone else on Knit and Chat recently who, excuse me, tired, um, who had the same problem I did, but finished their hat, of, of the colors didn't contrast enough. The Alaska hat has this tree pattern with a background sky that if you choose to do changey colors is really pretty. So I had picked, these are all my leftovers from my weekend knitting. I picked these two colors because it was, before I wound this, it was like, this is a, this is a tonal gray and it had a lot more light color to it in the twist. And I started knitting with it and, and y'all might've seen pictures with it. The idea was that it would look like trees at night. Mm -hmm. with the night aurora borealis sky yes. behind it. And, and I got 20 or so rows into the color work and went, this is not working. I could keep going, but I don't think it's going to work. So Liz helped me pick out this yarn in, to replace this yarn. And this yarn has sparkles. You can almost kind of see that on camera. It's the electrolyte. It's the same yarn I'm using for my flyby, which I can also show you. Um, which has black sparkles, this has gold sparkles. And I was like, ooh, sparkles, could be interesting. This is the result, look at that, look at that. Okay, hang on, I'm trying to flatten this out. Rebecca likes sparkles. I, it's really funny, I didn't always, like no, when, I opened, when I opened the shop. It's like yellow. Yeah, I guess so. 
<laughs> when I open the shop, I'm like, I'm not going to get sparkly yarn. That's just kitschy or that's just, you know, that's a gimmick. I don't need that. And then everybody wanted sparkly yarn. In fact, I still don't have enough sparkly yarn in the shop. One of the reasons I got sparkly mohair is so you could hold it with any yarn and make it sparkly, but a lot of people don't like to hold two yarns together or think that's scary when it doesn't have to be. If you just, you know, sink your brain around, they are one yarn. I'm going to treat them as one yarn. It may not always work, but I'm going to. Okay, so get to get back to this. See, okay, so I'm going to, not pretty. I was actually going to start the show wearing this and um, I got distracted with life. So <laughs> it's not a thing. Life is not a thing right And I, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to restart this hat and I have to do like three and three quarters inches of ribbing again. Never going to finish this. But that's why if anyone gets my newsletter, it went out so late last night because I wanted to finish this before um, I put out my newsletter. And so this is supposed to see. See those trees? Isn't that cool? That's really down there Ta -da. Long and tree. it does look like an aurora i know it aurora. looks like an evening aurora borealis so the sample when you see this online the sample is knit with a darker trees and a lighter color changing background i don't know if we have a lighter color changing yarn that that would take its place necessarily um i still have to do weights on these now the instructions say to take the leftover of this yarn and make pom pom haven't decided yet may not have time. But um, if we were going to make kits, I would maybe try to make enough so that you would have enough for a pom-pom. So I have to weigh this out and see. So let us know in the comments if you would be, or email us or contact us some way, if you would be interested in kits for this. Because see, I did some, I actually did some color manipulation with this. I didn't start right at the beginning of the skein. And I think this is a skein I had started to use for something else anyway. And then there was a knot in it. No. No. The bane of all knitters and crocheters' existence is a knot where the color change did not continue in the right place. So I had to pull off more yarn to continue in roughly a similar place that wouldn't change too drastically. But I'm really, really happy with how it came out. I think it's gorgeous. The pattern writer has commented on a few of my Instagram posts, which is really fun. It's always nice when they acknowledge that you're acknowledging them for all their hard work. So um, this was my big thing for the weekend, was working on this. And I don't think I worked on this at all on Saturday no. during the knit time. No, you didn't. No, I worked on other stuff. Because you had to wind. No, you didn't have to wind mm -mm. something. No, I just, um, it, was, it was not as exciting as other stuff I wanted to work on. <laughs> and then some of the stuff I worked on during the sit and stitch required more focus than um, I had energy when I was trying to also watch like two computer screens and other stuff and the cat, you know, so <laughs> this is all my leftover yarns from projects. Oh, um, one thing I did impromptu quickly over the weekend was, um, knit Brian a hat. It was Brian's birthday yesterday <coughs> and I posted my, me in it. It actually looks much better on him. It fits his head better yeah, yeah. and shows off. So Brian is a really big Star Trek fan. And I was like, ooh, ooh, because I'd lost track of when his birthday was coming up because life, you know, I've almost lost track of my own birthday at this point. <laughs> um, so I had a super sneaky conversation with him about his favorite Star Trek characters because Liz had come up with the idea of doing a Star Trek hat for him. And um, we even, she started, did the initial research and showed me some Ravelry patterns and I got a Ravelry pattern. And for an actual Star Trek insignia hat. And um, I'm gonna try to find it. Well, it kind of started out mocking the fact that she hasn't finished a lot of his A presents. lot of presents for him, it's true. So then so. it was, ooh, you could do a Star Trek hat because look, these are easy. And so. Um, yeah, and, and, um, and one of the plans was just to do a hat from the top down with occasional knit stitches um, that were another color because they'll look like a, a Star Trek insignia. It's like a little, you know. It's deep. an upside down knit stitch. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but then there was actually more formal patterns. And so I had this whole, like we went on our usual Saturday walk and I, I said, so who are some of the favorite Star Trek characters you have that you relate to? And I kept pushing and pushing. 
And I picked two of the characters that dress in the kind of yellow uniform, because that would help me figure out which color to do it in. And this is not a color corrected photo to show you here. I have leftover yarn again. I came to the shop on Sunday morning when he was gone and found this yarn. This is um, ultra alpaca in this nice mustard color. It was as close as I could come. This color, the olive oil color, really is the green from uh, the greeny yellow from Star Trek. But this was as close as I could come in the right weight. And I got a couple other colors. And this is the hat I made for him. With the and the Star Trek insignia on my head looks a little warped. It looks a little better on his head because he got a bigger head or more poofy hair, and so it fits a little better. But um, I didn't. I only <laughs> thought about stealing it from back from him to show you all today, and then I said that would be that would not be good. He probably won't let it out of his sight. Yeah, probably. he wore it part of last night at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I busted out a hat in um, two days. Um, cause it was, the pattern was for, it said Aaron weight, but it's Karen simply soft. That's not Aaron weight. Well, someone else's definition of Aaron, maybe. I think of Aaron as, as thicker than worsted. And this was wanting you on a size five needle, which is usually used for smaller yarn than worsted to get a gauge of 26 stitches for four inches when worsted is usually 20 stitches. And let me tell you, that means going a lot smaller. They, they might be thinking of Aaron like chair like the chair Aaron, Aaron. Yeah. that's DK. Yeah. Um, but the Simply Soft is, is very similar in content and thickness to the chair of Aaron. Yeah. So um, anyway, but that meant either, either the hat would, would stand up on its own and be uncomfortable to wear, or I'd have to make, I made a smaller size on a bigger needle and it worked out. It fit him. That's the important thing. So. That's because she can do the math. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> roughly, yes. Um, I've done enough hats and things to be able to do the math on that. So I did 100 stitches instead of 120 stitches, and it worked. Um, but I could still follow the pattern, which was kind of cool. So um, then I went back to making this. And so that was my big adventure, was to, to make uh, Brian a birthday, my husband-like person, a birthday present uh, in sneaky fashion. Um, in very short period of time. <laughs> Since there's about three projects I have for him on needles that I've never finished. I try to get a few things done to appease him <laughs> and keep him happy. Um, but I, I've gotten work done on, okay. Do we wanna be sharing anything you're doing, by the way? Um, so I'm not monopolizing like the entire- I can run through the saga of this. Yes, we do. So, Friday night, I think I worked on it a little bit because everybody's like, so you're going to wear your shawl, right? And on she next got week, peer pressure. Dude, and not from me. I'm like, Never from me. Well, if I quit focusing on other projects, I would, you know, I could knock this out but really fast. What's the fast. fun in that? And, um, focusing on one project's boring. So we love boring. you, Shia. I'm sorry. I... I am not monogamous with my knitting or crafting at all. Like, ooh, butterflies, and I chase them. And then I see another one, and they go a different direction, and another one. And so I only become monogamous with my crafting when it's like I need to wear it this week. And <laughs> procrastination is a great motivator. It is. So most of my academic career was accomplished that way. Friday, I think it was Friday <laughs> night, I was working on my brioche hat and I messed it up again. After the, it's always that row after a cable. <laughs> and I was like. Cause the cables make it hard to see the stitches yeah. straight is what I would imagine. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna put this down and I'm not even gonna bring it to the shop until I finish this to figure out what I did wrong because I really need to finish this. So all day, well. I got updates. I'm going out for a three to five and then I have to do this part. Yeah. And then I have to do this part. Yeah. And it was yeah. taken, it was taken a good hour to complete a row or a Well, strike. it's at the end. It's really it's the long end. knitting. But at, so last night after dinner, I was like, oh good, it's seven o'clock. 
I have an hour to go this way and get to 800 and whatever stitches and an hour to go back and get to 1,025 stitches and I'll start binding it off tomorrow. <laughs> well, it means and, if it's a slow day today, which, you know, is both good and bad for us, um, you could wear it because it's almost the same green, but it might be it, It's green. It's kind of, so, and I played yarn chicken with it. Yes, this was, I thought what you were going to do was brilliant. Did you end up doing what you said you were going to do? I did with two <laughs> different yarns. <laughs> Tell them. So um, I bought three of the um, butter beer? butter beers, which is the orangey stuff. Just to make sure I had enough. Shout out to Yarn Baby. She has beautiful colors. Love it. We have a little bit left in the shop, but please check out yarnbaby.biz, I think, if you want to see her yep. stuff directly. So I got to, where is it? It's on this side. I got to the end of section somewhere in here. Anyway, there it is. One one ball took me to one stripe past the the split for section two and three. Okay. Um, and so I had just a little bit left over, and I was like, I'm just going to start a new ball because there's no point in you know weaving in ends in the middle of a row. I really hate that. So I put on my second ball and I got to the very, to stripe 30 with the bowls. And I only had a little bit of my second ball and the little bit of the third ball. Oh, that's the picture you sent me. Okay. Yeah, before. And, and, and that was all you had to get across. You no. got stitch markers. Oh, oh there's some yeah. before too. Yeah, She's binding off, so, off. So stitch markers are just everywhere. Puh, puh, so puh, puh. I am um, so I I got actually the the first and I was ball, I was like you can just use another color maybe I had the third ball of of she had third ball. of of the the yarn to make it all look right mm -hmm. but I was like I don't want to I don't have time at least in my head it's a waste of time to, to wind it wind <laughs> a whole ball of yarn to use like several yards. So I'm sitting there, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. And I'm like, okay, I got done with one bowl. Do the second bowl. Oh, good. I'm done with the second bowl. I get around the corner and I ran out of yarn with the second ball. So I attached the, the first, the leftovers of the first ball. I have a comment when you're done. Go ahead. And I, I get done with the bowl. And I get all the way to the start of the the, the fourth bowl, the last <laughs> bowl in the, the thing. So I was like, crap. So I open up my, my skein of yarn. I put it on my Swift. And I knit off the Swift. <laughs> it's brilliant. Because, and then when I got done, I just tied everything back up. Oh, I was going to say, is it still sitting on your Swift? No, no, no. Because <laughs> so, you could have wound it then. No, no, because I didn't have time. <laughs> so then, this was all yesterday. So then I'm going back and forth with my two rows of purple, and I'm like, I need one more row of purple. And I have a ball that big. I, I haven't heard this part of it yet. No. So <laughs> I'm seeing I, the result, though. Yeah, it's very so pretty. I'm not going to. And so I was like, well, let me go check all my drawers of yarn and see if I have any purple. For some reason, I've only bought the one skein of purple, which is weird because I purple purple. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, purple's more my thing. But anyway, in, it's in, really dark purple. It, it yeah. So in digging through my my drawers of yarn, I found the tealy blue tiny. Oh, see, it looks it looks in your shawl. It looks like it's just like the llama lace. Like yeah, the texture is very it's, similar. It's so, awesome. alpaca and silk instead of llama. Yeah. But, um, so I was like, ooh, this will be a really cool pop of color at the very bottom where it, it's all it going to be green it anyway. It looks really cool. And so instead of balling it up, I happened to have an empty Swift. So I opened it up. <laughs> I put it on the Swift. She did it again. I knit back okay. and so forth and balled it back up. Th this back. is this is a good um, selling point for our Swifts. If you're going to sit at home and knit, you could just knit it right off the Swift. But that you have to be a, a monogamous knitter unless you're going to do what Liz does. 
Yeah, I, I did it more out of necessity and time. And because laziness. And la yeah. No, well, but ingenuity. So I wouldn't call it lazy. Right? I was, yeah. I, but I didn't have a half hour in, I knew <laughs> I didn't have a half hour to sit there and handle it. Can, can I make a logic gap in your awesomeness here? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so when you switched from ball one to ball two, what did you say? You, you started a new one at the end because you didn't want to have too many ends to weave in? I should have just kept going. No, well, uh, I'm just saying, you're, as your story continues, on that last row, you, you use this chunk and then this chunk and then the third. You got a lot of ends to weave in at the end of this, don't you? Uh-huh. If she chooses to. <laughs> but but not as, the end. Not so. as many ends to weave in as... Um, the 30 different colors on the papillon. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, not as many ends to weave in as if you changed up top. I don't think so. No. But no, yeah. The color manipulation that you did with every, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, yes, I have a lot of ends. I, Chances are I'm going to wear it with ends dangling on Thursday. But then they're all down at the bottom and you won't notice them anyway. Yeah. They're kind of tied. I just had to. It's my. It's you. So. It's my job to point out that you know you still kind of love it. So even, I, I do, but, but no, you couldn't have known that way when you switched from no. ball one to ball Yeah, I was because so. I was like, these are lasting way longer than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, and that that happens until when the rows get longer. All of a sudden, things take. Things longer. are gone. Oh my Lord. Like, gone. Triangle straws. And we all. You should know this as a I triangle straw knitter. I, I but <laughs> well, it's different. It's okay. it's the. It's the catch-22 that we've mm -hmm. talked about before of if you go up needle sizes and yarn sizes, and it in this case, it, it does change things. And is there a magic prescription to tell you how much yarn you need? And There might be, but I don't know of it. I, I'm all the time going up needle sizes, and mm -hmm. a lot of times it's you can do it almost exactly like if you're taking finger weight and going up the same amount in needle sizes you could it's almost exact you're going to need a bit extra for the bind off because you know like yeah but i just like to stick with this is not a magic box it's not a magic box we are not magicians and if you're planning on making a bigger even if on, liz is dressed like one today <laughs> i think it's awesome better. i just i keep looking over going i want a hat but I, I think it would it, fall off me. And I know I see how it, I see, I see. It would still, I wouldn't be able to balance it. It, would, it is making mask wearing difficult because I can't just pull ooh. it over. I have to actually untie the top and put it down and retie it. It's, it's, yeah. I put my pigtails unintentionally, but I was just like, what am I going to do with my hair today? So they're more at the sides of my head and it does make mask wearing. It just, it just changes it enough that it's like, what, what? But yes, I, I I am going with the the unruly Harlequin look today. I just need a little more face paint and other things to complete the look. Anyway, I, I do um, have an update, for her, though. <laughs> no, go ahead. M Mary and her shawl. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. So she was asking, you know, what I do at the shop, and <laughs> I'm a minion. Whatever Rebecca tells me. But to you do, sit I around and knit all day. That's yeah. what everyone who works at a yarn shop does. So why can't we be open on Saturday for? That's people? why I spend all weekend knitting. But um. Yeah. Because that's not all we do. But no. anyway, so I digress. She she asked and I was like, oh yeah, and we film three times a week for YouTube. And she went, huh, do you like it? It's kind of weird. And I was like, well, it was kind of weird at the beginning, but you know, we, yeah, it's weird looking at your face on camera and then, you know, occasionally playing it back or whatever. And, yeah, um, I I don't tend to because that, yeah. Yeah. I, I told her, stop. I said, there's even people <laughs> who ask about her shawl. Like, is she wearing it? Texas yesterday had a high of 59 and that was early in the morning. By the time I talked to my mom in the afternoon, Texas was 40 something degrees with a wind chill of 30. <laughs> and Mary, Mary replied back in the evening that Texas weather had finally cooperated enough for her to pull it out because it was... <laughs> It was cold. It, it, yeah, it was cold. For for them, I mean, they're te it's Texas. My mom's like, when it's cold here, mom's like, well, of course it's cold there because it's the mountains of North Carolina, but we don't get cold in Texas. And then when they do, they really Lose freeze their to minds. Death. Yeah, I like, can imagine. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so 
So she used it. Yeah. She's using it. She That's loves awesome. it. She says it's great. So she should start watching the show because then she could be like my sister and say, you're saying what about me now? <laughs> she doesn't she, <laughs> with, with six kids and no, no, I know. I know. I'm and not. school, she's a school teacher and husband's a, a school busy. teacher. And yeah, I barely have time to doesn't. watch TV anymore and I'm not juggling all that stuff. And so I can't imagine people who have jobs and kids who are, who are, yeah. might be remote learners yeah. right now. And just, this it's is crazy. why, this is why when people get angry at us for various things, we try to not get angry back because, um, we're all going through stuff right now. We're all going through stuff and we all have short fuses and we all don't know what the other person's going through. So, <laughs> yes. it's it's been crazy it's it's tough right now. oh i mean and, it's oh yeah and then what was it last night i was like hey when are we doing no that was sunday night oh i was like our next sit and stitch right yeah when and are we doing our next saturday sit and stitch because already planned four weeks from our last sit and stitch was the saturday after thanksgiving no. but yeah maybe yeah. five weeks it's anyway. five weeks but anyway yeah. She, no, it brought to Liz's attention. <laughs> Winter is coming. Thanksgiving is coming. Small business Saturday is coming. And Christmas is right around the corner. Yeah. Oh, crap. I think, I think, sorry. I didn't mean to be like contrarian, but I, exactly I, four weeks from last Saturday is the 21st. Okay. Which is I, when we're I just kind of freaked out because we've been doing them the, the fourth third. Yeah. The fourth Saturday. Of, we've been doing them towards the end of the month. Yeah. You're absolutely right. The fourth Saturday of uh, November is right after Thanksgiving. And so small business Saturday and all that kind of stuff. And we're kind of brainstorming on, we're not usually open on the weekends because we need to rest because the week is so chaotic and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we might be open on small business Saturday because, you know, we'll, not that Thanksgiving day will be an off day, but it won't be a business day. Anyway, but don't, don't plan on anything you hear until you see it in writing <laughs> yeah just because we're, we're shooting the whatever right now does not put it in stone yeah life might change or we might even if we're open it's still one person in the shop mm -hmm. and appointment shopping like, that's um this week actually we don't have a lot of appointments scheduled which could change um but next week again this is starting in november so it's not this week but starting next week, we are going to kind of make all the days the same, same schedule. We're here Tuesday through Friday, but all the days the same in that we'll try to accommodate more walk-up traffic on every day. And we'll try to ha have more inside appointment shopping every day. But appointments need to be made in advance. And, um, and just, we, everyone's going to need a lot of patience to try to make this work. Because if we're trying to help inside shoppers and outside shoppers, some of you have been here on days when the outside shopping is happening and multiple people show up and, and we'll do what we can. But if we have people inside and outside, it's, it, it, keep and, breathing. Yeah, some of that is because it's getting colder. I mean, yeah. by next week, the high is gonna be in the 60s. So helping people shop so, outside was great when it was warmer. Yeah. But we'll still help people outside, A, if they don't want to wear a mask, because that's gonna, you're gonna need that to come inside the shop because our air circulation is poop in here. Um, but we can still help you outside. Um, and, and B, if you haven't made an appointment and you need something fast, I mean, we can take longer times outside, but the weather might not be great. So, you know, anyway, that is November. It is still October right now. And some people might've stopped listening when I said, hey, we're gonna start doing everything on both days, on all days in November. Get ready for it. We'll put signs up. We'll change everything. Check, at the end of this check week. online. Check our website check out. Check ahead, right? The, the, um, out, the, until you see it in writing on our website, assume nothing has changed. Yeah. And we'll try to change it everywhere we can when it goes into effect. So on that note, I have like four projects lined up here in our last few minutes to just update you briefly on. Because um, Liz's stories are better than mine right now. Because right. I just worked on this. No, why is it so nervous? Is that? Ah. Um, um, I this was my morning knitting this morning. I did a little bit of knitting on this um, on Saturday. Not a whole lot of progress, but you know, it's it's the calliope sweater that just looks black from back there, right? 
but I separated the sleeves. Um, they, are, they are on, I think I've already showed off the se sleeve separation that I've done. I didn't have stitch holders, so they're just on other needles, which, you know, I could need for something else. She should else. work at a yarn shop. <laughs> I can't give her fingers right now because we're on the air. Uh, I wasn't at the shop and I wanted to keep going and now that it's happened I am not changing it. So but this is how far between my fingers I knit from the arm armpit separation the sleeve separation. So it's getting there but it's still not something I can wear decently in public yet. Um, but this is my calliope. You don't it's want the... a sparkly black midriff sweater? No not with the girl sizes I have. Mm -mm. And that is not going to be our cover photo for this. <laughs> so sparkly. Yay. <coughs> um, I have made progress. Um, if you saw my morning meditation the other week. Of, look at my little top socks. Ta -da. I'm just getting to the green in this yarn. This is Cascade Heritage Prince, which is exploding as I knit from both ends with it. Toe up socks. You have today to get 15% um, off this online with the code product of the week. And if we're out of any colors, contact the shop because we can give you pre-order pricing at the 15% off because we have more coming in. Um, the other self-patterning yarn for product of the week, and it's a little crazy right now because I pulled the, the guts out, is I'm doing these cuff down. Isn't that cute? Striping in opposite directions. This is Wacky Sacky from Universal Yarns. Our version of like the Zabra Ball? Yeah, Zabra Ball adjacent. Because <laughs> uh, we don't have Zabra Balls at the shop. And then this one, I was like, ooh. I forget why I, I ooed this. Oh, I was, I was looking for even a bigger project with this. This squishy, yummy stuff. I, um, I don't want to guarantee, but I think it's going to make an appearance tomorrow. It's not on our shop site yet, so it'll give me a reason to put it up on the shop site. Wool Addicts, which is like the Saturn offshoot of GM for line yarns. Um, the hip cool section of line yarns um, has a yarn called Air. And it is, I want to say a merino. But it's a single ply, kind of fuzzy, thin, thin, thick. We do have one of Wool Addicts yarns up online. We have Fire up we online. We have Fire. Which is a super bulky. But this one, Air, is not up on online yet, but look at that fuzzy texture. And they have some really cool sweaters. You know me in sweaters, but I should finish a sweater before I start yet another one. Yes, when she was planning, I get a whole series of texts. Sweater, 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 cow, hat, sweater. And I and was like- And there was gloves too, but no. I was like, why don't you do something quick and easy instead of another sweater that you're going to keep on needles Stall till out the on? spring? <laughs> knows me so well. You you um, have a purple and green sweater. Why would you need another sweater? <laughs> I wasn't going to make a purple and green sweater. I know. I'm so confused. But you have one that you're wearing. Um, yes, and I know. you okay. don't need to, you know, make another one. The sweater I'm eyeing, uh, I was going to make it out of this color, but there actually was a cowl called Miss Sunshine. Two balls of this. They're 50 gram balls. Stockinette. That's what I'm making right now. And you just knit a row and purl a row, knit a row, purl a row. Nice and easy. You could do it with any yarn, but it looks so good in this texture. Um, and then you Kitchener the ends together. It's provisional cast on here. If you don't like uh, provisional cast on or Kitchener stitch, which I have video about, by the way, two videos, um, you, you could seam it together. The, the thing about Kitchener is you don't really see the seam if you do it right. So it can, it can just be like an infinity cowl scarf thing. And they're, they're recommending that you twist it before you seam it together, but you don't have to. Um, easy, simple, yay, fun. Um, and tomorrow, maybe we'll show off the other colors of this. You could even do, if you didn't want a hand seam, you could probably even do like a three needle bind off yeah. or you there's, know, lots of there's lots of options. And yeah. But the, the Kitchener, the nice thing about the Kitchener is uh, you, you can't see it. really can't see it if, if it goes moderately well. But even if you see the seam, who cares? Put it in the back. Put it back here. Anyway, so um, it is about, it's, it's under five minutes from when the Vikings could possibly descend. So, um, and, and I don't know if I showed this off. This is my Viking sketch that I did last week. Ta-da! And I'm working with a graphic designer right now 
to at least get some bumper stickers. Eventually I want to get some pins. And we had someone who said, ooh, how about, because I haven't filled in color yet. How about all different hair colors and all different skin colors? And while that would be amazing, I really want to do that. Um, I have to order these in bulk. So I don't know if I can right away have all skin colors and hair colors available. But I will take recommendations for this. I, I suggested every color in the or every little notch in the braid. Oh yeah, she she color. wants she wants all the hair to be different multicolors, and I'm still taking that under advisement. Because <laughs> then when we do the, the the face, will we put different stripes across the face or something to represent all of our customers? You, you all could, of our Vikings. You could do different. Um, we're we're pondering. Give us ideas. Stripes or do like an opalescent where. It's almost like a rainbow. Oh, we could pick a non-skin color. A non-skin color. Oh, that could be cool. Just like take skin color and hair color out of the whole equation so that, you know. I like it. I like it to try to like both represent everybody and nobody. Or, you know. Ooh. Well, and because we do fairy hair. And fairy hair is kind of that opalescent. Yes, back I of don't a know if I can do pins that way. No, no, but we but, might be able to do. Um, anyway, yeah, we'll talk so. about this more off the air. <laughs> <laughs> it um, could be fun. Ooh, I like that idea though of not not doing any because there's you know she was kind of. Um, I was I was thinking the Brunhild, like Viking operatic singer, you know, who is pale skinned and um, blonde. And, but that's not even necessarily who Vikings are anymore with a lot of DNA research, but, um, and someone wanted red hair and we're like, we have red hair. Well, and neither one of us is naturally red hair, but, um, but this is to represent our customers. I like the idea though, of not going with like one stereotype. That's it, cool. I mean, you know, if, if you were going with a yarn stereotype, it could be gray hair. Because of what everybody assumes ah, knitters are, ooh. but like you could pick a random yarn color for the hair. I'm having so much fun. Okay, yeah. So you know, but taking you know, yeah. I have to. I have to email Lindsay later um, because she's like, "Are you going to change anything about this?" And I went, "No, other than putting some color in. I do think it needs color and maybe some thicker lines." But I was using a little ballpoint pen because that's all I had. Um, ooh, I have ideas now. I have thoughts. Okay. The idea fairy has struck again. The idea fairy named Liz, which is why the <laughs> shop is still in business. Okay, so. Oh, I have to take this. So Liz, okay. can you wrap up for us? Um, sure. Okay, um, hang on. So Rebecca had to take a phone call. And uh, anyway, so tonight is knit night. Join us with our phone number. 828-877-3550. Somebody double check that or Rebecca will put that in the comments. Um, tomorrow is the most dangerous show on YouTube. Uh, RVSC will have lots of new er, yarns, lots of yarns and notions to, to look at and new products for the week. And Thursday is Dear Becky and Lizzie. You can write to the shop. Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Or you can email me, Liz, at sundragonartandfiber.com. And like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, ring the bell, whatever I don't know anything about electronics. And I'm hoping I can get this to stop when we're done. So have a great day. We love you. We miss you. Come to midnight tonight. Bye.